Tony leads organizations through ownership and operational and fundamental industry changes, bringing strategic vision, financial fluency, and creative collaboration approaches to achieve patient, commercial, government, and public relations successes. He's currently the managing partner and chief executive officer of his own private practice, AA Armada Associates, providing expertise and consultations in the area of engagement, transformation, strategy, leadership performance, performance improvement, and diversity inclusion. Mr. Armada values and champions diversity and equity in healthcare, serving as past chairman of the Institute for Diversity and Healthcare Management Board, past inaugural chairman of the Asian Healthcare Leaders Association, a national 501c3 organization in collaboration with the Institute for Diversity, American Hospital Association, and the American College of Healthcare Executives, and a past regent at large for ACHE. Mr. Armada currently serves on the Equity of Care Committee sponsored by the American Hospital Association, focused in national efforts to eliminate healthcare disparities, and also serves as a mentor of the, for the ACHE and other internships, residency, fellowship programs. Currently, Mr. Armada currently serves as the board, uh, on the boards of the following, the American College of Healthcare Executives as governor, and the Health Resources and Education Trust, a subsidiary of the American Hospital Association. Please welcome Mr. Armada. Good evening, everyone. You know, first of all, I, I want to thank Laura, um, Toby, uh, Eric, uh, for the warm welcome uh, as a uh, as one of your ACHE Board of Governors. And it's such a privilege for us to actually be part of the chapter activities and, and really be part of your celebration today. Uh, congratulations to all the recipients. Uh, these are uh, individuals that just energized me with regards to your dedication uh, to your profession, to what you're trying to accomplish, uh, and what we are trying to create in terms of healthcare professional to the sponsors and to all of you. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's really the chapters and the activities of the chapters that actually make ACHE. And uh, our goal from a national standpoint is to actually support and be part of your success. So I, uh, I thought I would uh, uh, go into uh, just a, a brief dialogue on uh, uh, Leading, with leading in transformational times. Uh, I think uh, it's no surprise that we're in a big transition. Uh, I don't, uh, I, I probably can't uh, uh, surmise all of the different changes and all the different uh, uh, knowns and unknowns that each one of you are dealing with in your organizations. Uh, I think whether it's uh, expected or not, uh, clearly we are in a time of uh, uncertainty, but at the same time, we are also in the most exciting time of healthcare as we see it today. And overwhelmingly, where we have a lot of questions, uh, we are seeking to understand the answers and solutions uh, to that. And when this healthcare environment continues to evolve, healthcare executives of all backgrounds need to then look at their experience and be called to lead. And as we uh, opened up uh, today with the ACHE video, it is all about leadership and it's all about being a trusted partner in healthcare as we move forward. So, are you as a leader prepared for the future? You know, as we know, many industries are, are going through significant change, but transition in healthcare is one that's very formidable in the face of consolidations fundamental business models, consumerism, uh, shareholder issues, whether it's uh, not-for-profit or stockholders, and all of the expectations that prolong the condition that makes transformational leadership very challenging. Whether it's the volatility, whether it's uncertainty, the complexity or ambiguity, our leadership is now needed more than ever. So one of the things that we looked at and reviewed at our most recent Board of Governor retreat 
is the Future Scan 2017-2022 document. And the good news is that leaders are aware of the changes ahead. I don't think anybody in the room today will say that we're not in a state of change and how can I be as a, le a leader to be transformational. But we also need to adapt to the evolving landscape. So in the future scan uh, uh, article and uh, study, there are several key drivers for leaders during this transformation. One is this whole notion of delivery system integration. How many times do you see every day that there's some kind of system integrating or consolidating? But what does that system integration mean, right? Because uh, I can tell you my own experience, you know, getting bigger doesn't necessarily mean you are creating or delivering system integration. Two is creating value of patients and payers through payment reform. Whether it's Obamacare or some other part of uh, uh, our health payment systems, we know that at the end of everything that we do, it is all about how we take care of the patients and how we create value for the patients. And yes, we do need to make sure that we are very versed in understanding payment reform so that we define what value is all about as we evolve this leadership, this leadership and transforming healthcare delivery. It also calls for developing new leadership competencies for CEOs and physicians and creating the workforce uh, for the future. Most of us know there's four generations of, of uh, uh, within our workforce as we speak, and each one of us as leaders need to be able to understand what multi-generational activities we need to employ or put in our organizations to engage these multi-generational uh, uh, partnerships. So for me, in, in my previous job, I was the Executive Vice President and Chief Executive for Western Washington for Providence St. Joe's Health. And in that, uh, in that role uh, of nine hospitals and three partner hospitals, uh, 16,000 caregivers, 1,700 employed physicians, $4.6 billion uh, of, of accountability, I can tell you that all of the previous aspects of future scan that I just mentioned was all in play and uh, uh, and I was at the uh, forefront of actually Providence uh, Health and Services becoming uh, from a eight billion dollar organization to a 20 plus billion dollar organization as Providence St. Joe's Health and whether it's accountable care whether it's high reliability high performance organizations whether it's looking at innovation, consolidation, big data, continuum of care, and most recently announcing to make a major impact on behavioral mental health. All of those things are meant to elicit transformation. Uh, look at what we've done and how can we transform it to not only do it better, but create value along the way. And for me, in terms of my uh, career, what a blessing. Uh, what a blessing to uh, be able to uh, serve in the various executive capacities, uh, whether it's at Providence St. Joe's Health, uh, whether it's uh, uh, Advocate Healthcare, uh, Henry Ford Health System, or Kaiser Permin Permanente, uh, uh, leading the Los Angeles market. It has just been an unbelievable uh, journey uh, to be able to serve, to be able to perform, to be able to make an impact in the communities that we're serving and the lives of those that you serve as a, as a leader in terms of their success and their maximizing their potential. You know, imagine um, uh, I started out in, as a med midnight shift techn medical technologist in the laboratory. And, uh, and I will tell you that uh, uh, success came to me through partnerships and relationships, through the valuable mentors that I've had uh, 
for the many years that I've been in this field, and more importantly for ACHE. Uh, the uh, collegiality, the professionalism, the continual education, the continual learning, the energy I get from being a, a mentor or being a preceptor for residents, uh, interns, and fellows, uh, to actually being able to serve in various capacities, whether it's regent or now uh, be having the privilege to be a board of governor, uh, it has just been uh, just a tremendous blessing. Uh, and that one that I would carry with me, not only when I'm in the field right now, but clearly when I'm uh, 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 off the field uh, or doing something different. Because uh, again, one of the things that I truly value and I saw some of the old relationships that I've had in the past, even in this room that I haven't seen for many years, like Efton and others and Young uh, that, uh, and Bonnie, uh, you know, these are, uh, uh, these are connections that, uh, uh, that, that, that's something of value uh, as we move forward and, and, and deal with the things that uh, we do. But there's also uh, the changes of uh, uh, senior leadership teams uh, that is uh, a burning platform uh, for, uh, for us in our industry. Um, uh, I'm sure some of you in the room uh, may uh, uh, scratch your head and, and, and wonder what kind of what titles mean, right? Uh, first, they're CEOs, then they're administrators. Now there's CEOs. Is it a president, COO? Uh, we have new titles: chief integration officer, chief innovation officer, chief experience officer. Uh, there are a lot of moving pieces uh, in leadership teams. Uh, but one thing that is uh, very much an increase in demand uh, is relative to physician leadership. One of the things that's very much in demand is this whole notion of the competency and understanding on the emphasis of population health. Because of the mergers and acquisitions and consolidations in, in, in healthcare systems, there clearly is an increased demand for resiliency and for adaptability, and at the same time, changes in senior leadership teams also means not only leading the vision and strategy of the organization, leading the operational aspects of what you need to do day in, day in and day out, but it's also being able to be a leadership team that actually manages the affiliations with organizations, especially the community partnerships and the partnerships with each and every patient that you have. There's also uh, new skills and demands uh, that, uh, uh, that really is very important uh, in this changing environment. Uh, clearly, if you can't manage change or you don't like managing change, uh, this is going to be a very challenging environment for that individual. You know, one of the things that we cannot um, uh, downplay is really this whole notion of emotional intelligence, right? Knowing what you know, knowing what you don't know, and accepting the fact that you don't know it and learn from it. Uh, but more importantly, knowing the surrounding aspects that envelop you, whether it's organizationally or people-related. And because we are living in a very collaborative relationship uh, uh, type environment, the ability to influence rather than direct is actually one of the most important gifts that any successful leader in the future will need to grasp and really understand how to deliver. So given all of those, what is ACHE's opportunities in terms of uh, uh, helping our members, identifying new solutions, and preparing leaders to succeed. Uh, first of all, as you all know, uh, ACHE was founded in 1933, you know, really grounded in this whole notion of community and professional development. Our goal remains to support all healthcare leaders as they navigate a path forward and lead their organizations through a tremendous change. 
Our association prepares leaders for success at the various stages by exposing them to skills, specific education, experiences, and lifelong relationships. And we are impacting more and more leaders uh, every year. In fact, as you heard in the video, our membership has grown 13% over the last five years. And as of January 1, 2017, we exceeded 48,000 members for ACHE. So I wanted to just make sure that uh, uh, I outlined for you our focus for 2017 and 2019 because we have a very uh, uh, level of uh, uh, ACHE engagement. Some are new members, some, what, some, what, some are thinking of just be belonging to ACHE. But ACHE is very hard at work for you, for you, really focusing on the appropriate mix of work, whether it's running your organization, uh, whether it's growing and enhancing our offerings and brand position to meet the needs of the emerging markets and healthcare leadership, or innovate to deliver meaningful solutions for healthcare leaders that will be transformative for those of which we serve. So, as you heard about the CAL, uh, Strategic Plan, Values, Mission, and Strategy, our strategic plan has been always depicted as the framework that enables ACHE to, be, to continue to be the resource for each other and count on. Our core values of integrity, lifelong learning, leadership, and diversity and inclusion support our mission to advance our members in healthcare management excellence. As we embrace our challenges and new methods of improving care, the three strategic objectives of our strategic plan, preserve and enhance, extend and adapt, and innovate and educate continue to guide our journey. To achieve our strategic objectives, ACHE is undertaking four key initiatives that will enable us to better anticipate your needs and ensure you are equipped to address the challenges you face. We are focusing on our efforts on leadership, market relevance, value creation, and excellence. ACHE is committed to staying ahead of the curve and supporting you in your work towards providing better, safer, more affordable care, value for the patients and communities you serve. Our intent is to continually strengthen our core competencies by developing new skills that will guide and support our transformational leaders. The sole purpose of our work at ACHE is to support you, as I mentioned earlier, and your work so that together we fulfill our shared vision of improving health in the communities we serve. So let me just give you some highlights of the new work ACHE is undertaking this year support those three objectives. First is core offerings, ensuring continued preeminence. First, preserve and enhance. Members have access to core offerings and benefits from ACHE that help them advance their careers and grow as leaders. Whether it's educational seminars, more than 150 premier educational programs focused on healthcare management topics, whether it's networking opportunities, such as tonight, ACHE's official LinkedIn group, seminars and meetings, uh, specialized communities uh, that, you know, to name a few would be the Physician Executives Forum, the Healthcare Consultants Forum, the Asian Healthcare Leadership Forum, and the LGBT Forum, whether it's the Congress on Healthcare Leadership Publications through our Health Executive Magazine, our board certification, and don't forget our career services. That includes our Career Resource Center, the suite of Career Edge that helps you take tools for planning and uh, managing your career, the Job Center that enables you as members to search for positions and share your resumes, and of course, visit the ACHE.org slash career resources for all of the different activities that you can uh, uh, support uh, your uh, 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 your journey. 
Secondly, is strengthening and building on our tradition. ACHE builds on a long tradition of supporting healthcare leaders and their leadership journey. Really, it's a tradition that we have taken very, very seriously. I came, you know, I, came, I lost track of how many years I've been with ACHE, but uh, I can tell you that uh, I've uh, taken advantage of all of the different resources that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that I stated earlier. That's why the ACHE board has directed the new FACHE credentials in 2016, as you may have heard. Uh, we took steps to enhance the value of the FACHE credentials as a tool for positioning healthcare teams and organizations to meet the top challenges of the future. The Board of Governors appointed credentialing task force reviewing the requirements of the certification and the recertification to really evaluate the strength and opportunities of the credentialing program. Uh, that was led by immediate past chair, Ed Lamb, president and CEO of Mount Carmel Health System in Columbus, Ohio. And we learned that fellows find great value in their credential. 75% or more of our fellows agree that because of the FACHE credential, they are better prepared to cope with the challenges of the evolving landscape in our healthcare environment. The task force made a number of recommendations. Chief among them were to simplify the application process. We eliminated the two-step process. We introduced a new process to evaluate the changing nature of the job leadership and uh, uh, retain the experience and tenure components necessary for board certification and really increase awareness of the credentials itself and working and promoting the value of the credentials to employers including CEOs and chief learning officers. We anticipate that implementing these changes will encourage more members to apply to advance the fellow and will encourage leaders of different backgrounds and positions to apply and become board certified and healthcare management. When we look at the fostering career advancement, given the evolving healthcare landscape, whether it's consolidation, rising demand for non-traditional healthcare backgrounds, and shift in sought after leadership qualifications, successful leaders will be the ones to chart a different course and adapt quickly to changing circumstances. Resources like the competency framework and career edge sweet tools of activities uh, help healthcare leaders reinvent themselves and stay ahead of the curve. In fact, I just went through that, going through this transition and sabbatical period because I needed to be laser focused on really aligning all that I have to offer as an executive to my passion and what will give me joy in the why and meaningfulness I want to do what I want to do for our profession and as a healthcare leader. Career Edge is an interactive career planning tool that results in a highly actionable career plan, interview prep tools, and the ACHE Job Center. There has also been a lot of uh, uh, continuation to enhance and expand its long-standing commitment to diversity and inclusion with impactful programs and strategic initiatives. Chapter level activities are key to effective implementation of ACHE and diversity inclusion strategies. The Thomas C. Dolan Executive Diversity Program will welcome its fifth cohort of scholars in 2018. Former scholars are active in ACHE leadership and in their local chapters. Some of you are here. In 2016, ACHE also added two new forums to the existing community of physician executives and consultant forums. I shared that before, the Asian Healthcare Leaders Forum and the LGBT Forum. And the Asian Healthcare Leaders Association, where I was privileged to serve as the founding members along with Bonnie and others, is transitioned over to the Asian Healthcare Leaders Forum. And several chapters have already held collaborative programs with diversity forums, uh, and, uh, and we really look forward to uh, every chapter's continued collaboration in, uh, uh, in, in, in advancing diversity and inclusion. The growth of diversity of disciplines, gender, race, geogra geography, career stage, and other dimensions is well reflected in ACHE. To build on the strength, we continue to promote inclusion and take leadership roles in helping to advance executive diversity. ACHE has partnered with the Institute for Diversity to co-promote its 2017 Summer Enrichment Program. 
which matches exceptional graduate students with healthcare organizations for a 10-week summer internship. ACHE's network of chapters helped to identify summer enrichment program host sites across the country. And I, for one, have been very uh, grateful for having hosted a summer enrichment program candidate uh, in my previous organizations. ACHE and its five national diverse partner groups have recently launched the Executive Diversity Career Navigator. It's an online resource to help diverse healthcare professionals navigate their path to their senior ranks. This diversity career navigation is part of a collaborative initiative to increase and sustain diversity and inclusion at the highest levels of healthcare leadership. In addressing the needs across the continuum of care, there are core offerings that will always be a key component of achieving our mission. We all also are adapting our offerings to more reflective of today's leadership. This includes a broader network of healthcare professionals, from physicians to medical practitioners, to insurers and long-term care executives. The goal is really simple, spread our resources, extend the commitment to continuous learning for the betterment of the field as a whole. Each chapters are key to this outreach. And as leaders, our ability to work together regardless of discipline and background will define our success. For example, ACHE is working to expand our physician leadership development opportunities and curriculum. We are seeing significant membership growth in this and nearly every target segment of, uh, of, of uh, uh, membership. As we continue to transform, one of the opportunities is delivering uh, meaningful solutions. Our third objective of innovate and educate. The time for leadership is now. While you may be in different stages, ACHE will be right there to help us understand what we need. We spend significant time ensuring the tools we provide are both tools you need and we adapt them in real time to keep resources relevant and deliver meaningful solutions. Some of the uh, tools that has been created as development of physician leaders taught by Carson Dye and a host of physician executive levels. Whether it's leadership skills or management skills, clinical and administrative diets, continuum care strategies, case studies developing successful care continuum strategies, all of those has been highlighted in the, uh, uh, in the areas of uh, uh, innovate and educate, whether it's in chapter meetings or in cluster meetings or certainly at the ACHE uh, 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 Congress uh, meetings. The other thing that uh, has had a lot of uh, uh, movement and work is this whole notion of committing as healthcare leaders to leading for safety. This is probably one of the more impactful aspects and commitment of ACHE uh, on, on the years ahead. This whole notion of power of partnership and convening thoughtful leaders to leverage expertise and collaborating and developing a guideline for C-suites and strategic and tactical strategies. One of the things that uh, has happened uh, in uh, 2016 and 2017 is ACHE and an Institute for Health Improvement and a National Patient Safety Foundation Lucian Leap Institute and the partnership that we created through roundtables, safety and culture discussions, and actually uh, our chairman Chuck Stokes along with Gary Kaplan of uh, the National Patient Safety Foundation and Lucian Leap Institute rolled out a, uh, 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 this commitment and partnership at our last Congress. And then there's leading for value. Though all of us uh, are trying to understand what does, what does value really mean, and as we move away from fee-for-service towards value-based business models, as they accelerate, a ACHE is embarking in a three-year effort to educate and provide tools to healthcare leaders on what they need to do 
to get their organizations value ready for 2020. At the end of 2016, ACHE began exploring a new partnership with Levitt Partners uh, uh, and, and Governor Mike Levitt, uh, United States Secretary of Health and Human Services from 2005 to 2009. Uh, Governor Levitt actually held several roundtable discussions with some of the top leading healthcare executives on the varying degrees of success in moving away from fee-for-service payment toward adoption of value-based business models. And one of the key takeaways from the roundtable was that the value readiness of more, most organizations can be characterized as very poor, right? Because all of us talk about this whole notion of delivering value, but all of us also know that we are in the cusp of a fee-for-service and defining what value-based is all about. So based upon these insights, uh, ACHE is going to continue these roundtable discussions and again assemble and will be assembling 15 or 20 CEOs from leading health systems that will be held at the ACHE Congress from 2017 and 2019. And for each roundtable, ACHE and Levitt Partners will publish an article that reflects the discussion and the key areas to be addressed in the coming years to help healthcare leaders successfully transition their organization to value-based payment models. There are about eight, over 80 members who represent hospital systems, associations, physician groups, insurers, medical product manufacturers, regulators, academic organizations, and service contractors as part of this collaborative way in trying to develop and disseminate programs, tools, and resources to make the accountable care content actionable, as well as create new content that will engage healthcare leaders at the national, regional, state to expand the effort of accountable care and the, uh, uh, and the partnership that we have between ACHE and Levitt Partners. And you heard about the, uh, uh, the trying to create uh, support and funds uh, to uh, keep our required skills and navigate the uncertainties in place. So last year, the Volunteer Giving Committee of the ACHE staff collaborated to update and recast the fund in its new name, the Fund of Healthcare Leadership. And the fund is really meant to uh, acquire the needed skills and training to effectively lead today and into the future. The fund provides 100% of the funding for the Thomas C. Dolan Executive Diversity Program, and more than 680 donors help the fundraiser over 200,000 from contributions and pledges, and right now have raised more than $3 million uh, since the fund's exception. Uh, inception. Please keep the fund in mind as uh, you uh, look into your, um, your charitable priorities. Since the first chapters were charted in 2004, chapters have achieved exceptional growth. That, uh, here at uh, Northern, Northern California, uh, in all of the different events, attendees, and two point million plus attendee hours uh, we've logged so far. And again, it's, it's just really the energy and the activity and the commitment by each one of our chapters and each one of the leaders and each one of you uh, to really be the best in our game and uh, be ready for uh, whatever this healthcare has in store for us. I think you may also have, uh, have heard that uh, uh, ACHE has uh, embarked on the Baldridge, Malcolm Baldridge journey. And uh, in 2016, uh, the ACHE was actually awarded the Gold Award for the Illinois Performance Excellence, uh, uh, ILPEX for uh, the Malcolm Baldridge, you know, for uh, health, for, uh, uh, um, for transforming and, and, and providing excellence uh, in, in, uh, in performance and in, in what we do. In order to sustain and enhance the value we deliver to our members, ACHE is committed to continuing this performance excellence journey. And to this end, in 
2011, ACHE began participating in this application, evaluation, and feedback. And one of the things that we are really looking seriously on as a board is continuing to understand our strategic plan and the framework of our strategic plan and really making sure that through that Baldrige annual review, we're really looking at things similar to what most of our organizations are doing. It's no longer a three to five year plan. It's a three or five year vision and a plan, but it's always being refreshed every year to make sure that we're up to speed in what is demanded from us, not only as professionals, but also in the field. So one of the things that, uh, and it may be a little fuzzy in the, uh, uh, in the slides, is uh, uh, when we had our board retreat uh, at the, uh, uh, in, in the summer, uh, we actually uh, worked with, uh, 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 with a, uh, an organization and really took a deep dive on uh, uh, what the slides prior I shared with you in terms of 2017 to 2019 and looked at the, uh, uh, the, the information that was uh, uh, discussed through FutureScan and also looked at all of the different changes that are occurring. And so uh, uh, you are probably one of the first uh, chapters to see this as a chapter uh, because this is actually the work that we are going to be doing at our, our leadership conference in September with all of the regents and the chapter presidents along with the board to help us understand what we need to do to transform what we've called out as the 2017 and 2019 strategic plan and vision and make it project to 2018 to 2020. And one of the things that you will notably see is it's no longer a very hierarchical uh, uh, presentation or look. It's very continuous and fluid. And where we talked about enhance and innovate, and we talked about transform, one of the things that we are going to be uh, uh, really uh, challenging ourselves as articulated in these two different uh, uh, pictures is should we be the catalyst of transformation for healthcare professionals? Should we be the organization that is the connector of all of the other healthcare leaders or healthcare organizations that are out there, whether it's the physician executives, uh, whether it's the nursing executives, and all of the different executive uh, leadership uh, uh, organizations out there. But more importantly, can we project ourselves to be the trusted partner when it comes to healthcare professionals and healthcare leadership? So, really, it goes without saying as, as I end that uh, uh, I like to, uh, on behalf of ACHE, recognize our ACHE's premier corporate partners and, and really the important role that they play in supporting ACHE's mission, mission, again, to advance our members and healthcare management excellence. Each premier corporate partner plays an important role in providing funding uh, that helps ACHE for developing programs supporting initiatives and career resources, enhancing network opportunities, and providing additional lectures at our clusters to which ACHE often invites local chapter members to attend. By partnering with ACHE, these companies are demonstrating their commitment to your career development and the importance of continuing in an era of transformative change. Again, I encourage all of you to learn more about our ACHE's premier corporate partners and the products and the solutions they offer by visiting our acheorg slash corporate partners. So with that, uh, let me conclude by saying what a privilege it is to be uh, with you tonight. Uh, what a privilege it is to share uh, the night with you. I can't share with you how energized I am uh, with, uh, uh, with 
the stuff that all of you are doing, uh, both professionally as well as organizationally. And again, what can we as ACHE do for you as chapters in order for us to be successful in our mutual mission? Again, thank you so much for having me here and uh, uh, really appreciate the invitation. Thank you. Please join me in thanking Tony again. So before I say goodnight, I do want to just say thank you for spending your evening with all of us. Each of you took time away from your family, from other life activities to be here, and some of you even have family members here with you, and it means so much um, that you've joined us to celebrate here this evening. Everyone in this chapter has given so very much for us to be able to do what we do. We are an incredibly proactive and energetic chapter, and I know that ACAG sees us as an especially proactive chapter and looks to us for much of that role modeling and examples. So I thank all of you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for being here tonight. Good evening. Drive safely.